Hello everyone, welcome to the next lecture in the computer network series and today we will see layering in computer networks. We will start the session with the outcomes. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to understand what is layering in computer network, understand the benefits of layering and know the introduction of OAC reference model and TCP IP model. We will now see what is layering. Layering means decomposing the problem into more manageable components or layers. It means decomposing. Decomposing means breaking the big problem into smaller problems. For example, if we are supposed to solve a big problem, instead of solving a big problem at once, we can break that big problem into smaller problems if we solve all smaller problems and obviously the big problem is solved. So, layering means decomposing the problem into more manageable components or layers, which has two advantages. It provides more modular design. In computer science, we know very well that modularity has its own advantages, where big problem is broken into smaller problems and we are able to solve smaller problems effectively so that we can get the solution for the big problem. Likewise, in computer networking also, we are going to use such kind of modular design. And also, it is easy to troubleshoot. Suppose, if we have 5 layers and there is a problem in one layer, we need not go and check other layers. We can just focus on the layer which has encountered an error. So, that's the power of layering. It provides more modular design and it is easy to troubleshoot. So far, we have seen what is layering. Now, we will see what is the role of protocols in layering. We know very well that protocols is a set of rules that governs data communication. And the protocols in each layer governs the activities of data communication. We have seen in the previous lectures that we are going to add IP address, MAC address and port address with data before sending the data. So in each layer we are going to address each of these addressing. And each of these addressing are taken care by different protocols. That is what is mentioned here. The protocols in each layer governs the activities of the data communication. And ultimately, we want effective data communication. So, we need certain rules to govern this data communication, which protocols takes care. Now, we will see what are the layered architectures available. We are going to focus on two layered architectures in this series. Number one, the OSA reference model. And number two, the TCP IP model. We will see the OSA reference model now. The OSI model, OSI stands for Open System Interconnection. It is a model for understanding and designing a network architecture that is flexible, robust and interoperable. If you don't understand this, just listen to this example. Suppose there are two computers and we are intended to have communication between these two computers. And so obviously we are going to form a network. This network architecture should be flexible, robust and interoperable. Interoperable means, suppose if one computer is sending data which is generated by Windows operating system and that should be acceptable by other computer in Linux operating system. So that is what is interoperable. And not only in terms of operating system, in terms of applications too. This network architecture should be robust. We should rely upon this communication. And it should be flexible enough too. This OSA model is developed by the International Standards for Organizations which is well known with this acronym ISO. So, ISO developed this OSI model. The very important note is that the OSI model is not a protocol. So, it is not implemented. It is only a guideline for two different computers or two different systems wants to communicate with each other. They can follow these guidelines. And hence, it is referred as the OSI reference model. We will now see what is the purpose of having this OSI model. The purpose of the OSA model is to show how to facilitate communication between different systems without requiring changes to the logic of the underlying hardware and software. If it is very lengthy, just listen to this. If there are two different systems that wants to communicate with each other. So, we want to establish communication between two different systems. One system which is running with Windows operating system and another system is running with Linux operating system. But our protocols should convert the data in such a way that any operating system should understand that data. So that is what is mentioned. So the communication between different systems should be facilitated 
without requiring changes to the logic of the underlying hardware and software. If two different architectures, one is using Motorola architecture, another one is using Intel architecture, it should not be a problem for computer communication. So irrespective of hardware and software, the computer communication should happen between different systems. And that is the purpose of this OSA model. Please note, this OSA model was never fully implemented. It is just a guidelines. So far we have seen the OSA model. Now we will see the TCP IP model. The TCP IP model. Firstly we will see what is the expansion for TCP IP. TCP IP, Transmission Control Protocol and the Internet Protocol. The TCP IP protocol suite was developed prior to the OSA model. Before OSA model was developed, the TCP IP protocol suite or the TCP IP model was developed. So therefore, the layers in the TCP IP protocol suite do not exactly match to those in the OSA model. And TCP IP is a hierarchical protocol made of interactive modules and each modules provide a specific functionality. We know very well that for any communication to happen in computer network, we need IP address, MAC address and port addressing. So each layer will take care of each of these addressing. For example, one layer will take care of port addressing. Another layer will take care of IP addressing. Another layer will take care of MAC addressing. So each of these are interactive modules and each module does a specific functionality. So far we have seen the OSA reference model and the TCP IP model. Then that's it guys. I hope now you are clear with what is layering and what are the benefits or advantages of layering and you know the introduction of OSA reference model and the TCP IP model. I hope the session is informative. Thank you for watching.